Team member Danny Noggle lives and hunts in southwest Missouri, about an hour west of the Proving Grounds. The habitat type on the property he hunts is primarily hardwood timber surrounded by some cattle pastures. Typically in this type of habitat, especially on Danny's place, quality food sources are limited. So if you can find the food sources deer are using, you can usually see and tag deer. Knowing this, one of the large parts of Danny's hunting strategy is creating and establishing hidey hole food plots. Danny and fellow hunter Bradley Lukenhoff have done a great job utilizing the already open areas on the properties they hunt, where there's enough sunlight reaching the ground to grow a food plot. During this summer, Southern Missouri, along with some other folks across the Whitetails Ranch, have experienced a wicked drought this summer. But during late August, a good shower was forecasted to pass over the property that Danny hunts. Well, it is August 17th, kind of late in the evening, but there's rain in the forecast. So Danny and I are broadcasting some green cover seed uh, into another hidey hole. It's just a big long strip. You may recall, uh, I was able to tag a bonus buck out of this plot, actually about where I'm standing last year. A lot of deer use this plot just kind of as they're crossing through. Um, and so establishing the food plot, um, not going to be any kind of major food source or anything, but something that hopefully they'll just, uh, as they're crossing from the timber, uh, going up this ridge to my right, uh, that maybe they'll just stop, get a couple bites to eat, and allow us a shot. Once seed and rain had hit the ground, Danny put up a Moultrie Mobile edge to overlook the hidey hole, and when that forage started growing, critters came in and they were head down feet. You can bet with all these images, Danny was excited for hunting season to start. Of course, he'd been shooting his bow all summer, punching that morel target. He'd been scouting and had found a lot of white oak acorns in the area up on the ridge around that hidey hole plot. Things were shaping up to be a great early season. During late September, Danny started getting photos of deer feeding on acorns in the timber. He knew those first white oaks were dropping acorns, so he had acorns, a hidey hole food plot. He knew then it was time to slip in under the right conditions and hunt that area. During the afternoon of September 30th, there was an east wind forecast. Now this was perfect for Danny to slip in from the southwest, come up an old logging road, and kind of hunt the south side of the hidey hole with oaks in the area. Well, we've just slid into one of our properties. I was out here just a couple days ago and noticed that a white oak was just dumping acorns. So we're on a little ridge here. There's just a pile of acorns. There's deer sign everywhere. There's deer poop right here in front of me. And uh, we've got several acorns. Like as we're sitting here doing it, we can just hear acorns raining down. We're gonna hang and hunt. Uh, hopefully just put some meat in the freezer, but we might get lucky and a buck might come through too. He put all that information together, found that most recent information, the MRI, and decided to hang a stand on the south end of the hidey hole, right in between some large oaks and the hidey hole. Well, we just got the stand hung over here in the white oaks. A uh, bunch of oaks in here. I said, got it right there in that one. Got a stand, big white oak, big white oak, big white oaks up on the ridge. And it is flat raining acorns in here. Uh, we're gonna slide out, it's about 345. We're gonna change clothes, get back up in here and hunt this evening. Danny was excited. He slipped out of the woods, changed into his elite clothes, grabbed his bow, and headed back to hunt. It's September 30th here in Missouri. Deer season's been open for a couple weeks, and today's my first set. Um, came in here a couple days ago, moving a blind platform, and we noticed that there were some white oaks that were just flat dumping acorns. So we slid back in here today, checked the spot that there's a pretty good grove of oaks, and the acorns are really coming down. A lot of deer sign in here, a lot of deer poop. You can see in the leaves where they've been milling around. So we came back in today, threw up a stand. We're in it, we just hung the stand about two hours ago. We're gonna sit tight and hope for some venison tonight. Danny hadn't been in the tree long when he saw a deer feeding in the plot.
This group of does were head down feeding on the fall release and trailing behind them was a good looking young buck. As these deer fed in the plot, they eventually worked up the ridge and started feeding on acorns. Wouldn't you know it, on those white oak acorns. Sure enough, after crunching on acorns for a while, the deer started working their way towards Danny. shot looked great and he thought he heard her crash just inside the timber. So he climbed down and picked up the blood trail courtesy of the dead meat broadhead. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Green Cover Food Plots, Winchester, Lacrosse Footwear, Moultrie Mobile, Fleet Outdoor Apparel, Morel Targets, RTP Outdoors, Fourth Arrow, Hunt Stand, Scorpion Venom Archery, SIH Tractors, Ward Laboratories, Burris Optics, National Land Realty, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. Well, she died about 15 yards from the road, so she made this real easy on us. We're gonna drag her down and go get the truck and get out of here. Man, Danny was excited to punch his first tag. Of course, it always feels good to punch a tag on the first hunt of the year. But even more than that, Danny had fresh taste in venison to take home to his family. And in fact, that weekend, he enjoyed a tasty backstrap. Looking back over Danny's hunt, it provides a lot of lessons to us hunters looking to fill that early season tag and put venison in the freezer. As Danny was sharing his story with me and I was working with him, looking at photos and whatnot, there was one thing that really stood out, and that was the amount of daylight activity he was seeing on this property. I got to thinking, man, Danny's just showing me the daylight images, but when we got down to the nitty gritty and Danny dove into the Moultrie mobile app and he started filtering the past two weeks, you know, those, those first two weeks of hunting season, and then he looks at just deer movement. There were two huge spikes morning and afternoon. And in between, there was still a lot of deer movement. Deer were moving a majority of the time in this small area where Danny was hunting during daylight. I think this is very important to note because Danny then used that information, waited until the conditions were right, slipped in, hung and hunted within just a few hours and harvested a deer. He knew deer were active during daylight, during shooting hours, and he went in and got it done. You may be looking at the deer activity at Danny's place and you're asking, well, why is that? And there's probably a multitude of factors, you know, weather, food sources are changing, acorns, whatnot. But I think one thing that really stood out is probably even just the hunting pressure. Danny didn't go in and hunt it, you know, first day of season just to be in there. He waited until the conditions were right and deer weren't alerted to the presence of a hunter or a predator, if you will. And there was food everywhere. So they could feed on acorns, go down, feed on the hidey hole plot, going 50, 80 yards, bedding down, getting up and feeding. 
They're not having to avoid predators, so they feel very secure to move freely during daylight. Another key to Danny's success was that he read fresh sign. Now that may sound simple. I think it played a huge part in his success. And that's because deer movement and food sources can change quickly, you know, within a few days or even overnight. You know, big windstorm comes the next day, knocks acorns off all throughout the timber. That pattern could definitely change quickly. So finding fresh sign, moving in and hunting accordingly, I think those are two great takeaways from Danny's hunt. As season progresses, food sources are gonna change, deer behavior is gonna change. You know, we're gonna see a increase in rutting activity as we get closer to the peak of the rut. Scrapes are gonna start opening up and whatnot. And that means our hunting strategies have to change. So I hope you stay tuned, subscribe to Growing Deer, check us out on social media, and make sure you're staying up to date on what we're seeing here at the Proving Grounds and what other folks are sharing with us across the Whitetails range of those current food sources and hunting strategies. Danny's hunt is a great illustration of success by taking action. And the same is true for our life. I hope you slow down this week and seek the creator and his will for your life every day and take action to what you hear from him. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.